Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Aaron and today I'm going to be showing you guys this guide on how to play Outlaw Rogue for PvP Legion. I feel that I have got to play this back a ton lately and it feels sufficient enough to make this guide for all of you. This guide will be thorough as it will go over the, all the spec changes, the talents, honored talents, artifact weapons, rotation, burst and other general things for you to take note of. Hope you find this video useful as it is geared for both audiences those that are new to Outlaw Rogue PvP and those trying to improve when playing Outlaw. Currently I feel like Outlaw is in a very good position, it is a powerful spec with strong finisher damage, good sustain, an RNG buff mechanic, good mobility, good survivability and most of the CC out of all three Rogue specs. And I feel like the spec is fairly easy to play. The difficulty with the spec will be coming from making judgement calls or when to reroll your buffs and knowing how to line up your burst. The spec has a ton of potential for PvP and is currently my favorite spec of Rogue to play. If you played Combat Rogue in the past during Warlords or General, then this spec will feel familiar but it is definitely not similar as a lot of changes have happened through Warlords into Legion. First I want to go over the talents that you'll be using for PvP and give you guys some alternations and some of the reasons to change your talents. In the first row of talents I think Ghost of Strike is the best. It offers you 10% increased damage which is great during burst and pretty decent during sustain but for the most part it applies a 10% extra damage which especially combos together for your burst. And next we have Grappling Hook which I think is the best. It is a 30 second cooldown, 40 yard range and will grapple you into an area of location. It sometimes has some verticality to it but in most battleground and arena situations the verticality is disabled and the Grappling Hook really works with the floor. In the next we have Deeper Stratagem and I feel like it is the best compared to Vigor because Deeper Stratagem synergizes really well with the Outlaw Rogue Artifact Weapon. In the next tree we have Elusiveness and it's really a choice of Elusiveness versus Iron Stomach and Cheat Death. All three of them are actually pretty good right now. I feel like Elusiveness is best for most uh, BG and Arena situations. Cheat Death can be really really good in some 2v2 situations especially as a double DPS since the game is fairly bursty. And Iron Stomach can work well in Battlegrounds and Duels when you need some healing. At a level 75 tree, it's really a choice between Prey on the Weak and Dirty Tricks. For the most situations, you are going to want to use Dirty Tricks because having Gouch, Blind, Cheap Shot, and Sap at no energy is very convenient. But Prey on the Weak can be used in order to increase a little bit extra damage, but it does force you to burn a Vanished Cheap Shot into a target when you are bursting. I feel like Prey on the Weak is probably the best when you're trying to line up burst with another DPS in 2v2 arenas and maybe in 1v1 duels. And the next tree, it's really a choice between Cannibal Barrage and Killing Spree. Camel Barrage is best in BG situations where you have a bunch of enemies clumped together and has a short uh, minute cooldown, but in most cases killing speed is simply better and you should be using killing speed in most situations. Except in BGs you can play around with Cannonball Barrage. And the next tree it's a choice between Mark for Death and Death from Above and I've seen Outlaw Rogues use both of these abilities. I feel like Death from Above is okay in terms of damage but I just don't like it as much as Mark for Death. Mark for Death synergizes really well with your Roll the Bones and that is the reason why I usually roll Mark for Death. Now I want to go over the Honor Talents and some of the variations that you could choose for those. For the Honor Talents in the first tree we have Gladiator's Medallion or Relentless. In most type of situations you do want to go Gladiator's Medallion to get the 2 minute cooldown of a trinket rather than the 3 minute cooldown. But in some situations you can go Relentless. Relentless works best if you are playing a BG arena where you are not the kill target. So you can simply reduce the CC effects that you'll be upsetting in order to have more uptime on your target. That or if you're playing with a healer that is going to keep you alive so you don't have to sit CC as often. And the next tree is a choice between reinforced armor or sparring. In most stable situations you will want to go reinforced armor. In arena situations where it has a caster cleave or a caster DPS cleave then you want to go reinforced armor. If you are going against heavy melee cleaves and arenas or if melee are giving you a lot of trouble in BGs then you can definitely go uh, sparring in order to be able to reduce some of the damage melee deal to you. In the next tree it's a choice between maneuverability or cut to the chase as I don't really like boarding party. Maneuverability is great because it during sprint suppresses all movement and period effects for 4 seconds when used and it's very convenient when you're playing against classes that root you or slow you. And cut to the chase is good against any comps or any situations where you are not going to be constantly slowed. So this cut to the chase can work in duels against certain classes, can work in arenas against certain classes and can work in BGs for the most part. And the next tree you should be going Thick as Thieves because it allows Tricks of Trade to be used on yourself and a friendly target to give both of you 15% damage increase. This is probably the best option for arenas and battlegrounds. If you are dueling however, you can go with either Honor Among Thieves or Turn the Tables. 
For the next auto talent trait, Control is King is the best option no matter the PvP situation. Control is King grants you 5 seconds of adrenal rush for any enemy within 40 yards that are stunned, polymorphed, or silenced, which happens quite often in arenas or battlegrounds. For the last trio, all three talents are pretty good, but the ones I like the most are Dismantle and Plunder Armor. Dismantle is great against melee, whether it be battlegrounds or arenas will basically stop any melee from being able to dish out damage to you. This will also account for extra CC and will not replace your blind like it used to back in the beta. If melee don't bother you that much, then Plunder Armor is overall the best choice. It is a great DPS buff for 20% damage increase, 10% health increase, while decreasing your opponent's damage by 20% and health by 10%. It is a 2 minute cooldown, it gives you a lot of damage and great for dealing with casters. Like Dismantle is great for dealing with melee, you would use Plunder Armor against casters. Now I want to talk a little bit about your basic abilities in your main rotation. Your basic combo point builder at melee is Saber Slash. 50 energy deals moderate physical damage and has a 35% chance to strike a second time which will generate an extra combo point. If Saber Slash does strike a second time then he offers you a free pistol shot. Your pistol shot is a 40 energy cost ability with 20 yard range, deals slightly moderate damage uh, compared to your Saber Slash, generates one combo point. At melee range, you basically want to use pistol shot only when you get free procs for it. At range, if you are kiting or chasing after an enemy, feel free to use pistol shot as it will deal low damage but will slow down your targets. Your main ability of what you spend combo points into are roll the bones, run through and between the eyes. Between the eyes is a ranged stun that has a chance to crit and if it crits it deals 4 times more damage and stuns the enemy per combo point spent to it. It has a 20 yard range so feel free to stun enemies at distance. Your run through is an ability where you basically are spending your points into an offensive capability such as an eviscerate. Although it's called run through, it has a little bit of range and it's basically the bread and butter of the damage that an outlaw can deal as it is the highest hitting spell in our book. Then we have Roll the Bones, which is a randomized buff generator. It basically replaces the old slice and dice we know of today, and it can give you between 1, 2, 3, or 6 different buffs. You are very, very lucky if you get all 6 buffs. The buffs are Grand Melee, increasing your attack speed and giving you a better leech. Shark Defensive Water is increasing your critical strike. True Baron, which reduces the cooldown of most of your abilities, offensive and defensive. A uh, pair of points spent into a finisher. When we have Jolly Roger, which increases the chance for a Saber Slash to hit a second time. We have Broadsides, which allows all your abilities to generate a combo point to generate an additional combo point. And Buried Treasure, which gives you a 25% increase on energy regeneration. Knowing all these buffs and knowing how to use them as an Outlook is one of the most important things in playing Outlook for PvP. And being able to change your playstyle to the buffs that you are given is going to determine whether you are a good or a bad Outlook. So remembering your buffs, knowing exactly what to do, and knowing how to adjust your playstyle depending on the buffs given is the way to go. Now I want to take a look at Roll the Bones buffs and talk to you guys about which buffs you want to keep and which buffs you want to get rid of and how would you utilize every single one of these buffs. Knowing how to change your playstyle to the buffs that you are rolling is the most optimal thing to do as an outlaw rogue. So your playstyle is going to adjust slightly depending on which buffs you get. I rolled my buffs and I got Buried Treasure. During Buried Treasure you are allowed to use as many of your abilities as possible because you have a higher energy increase. So you are to spam out your abilities. Another buff you, I got here is a Critical Strike for Shark Infested Waters. With this buff this is where you want to use your big offensive cooldowns. So if you have your artifact weapon, your adrenaline rush, your cannibal barrage available, this is where you want to unload as much burst into your enemy as possible as it increases your crit chance. In PvE environment my crit is 61% but in PvP environment the crit goes up to just slightly above 50%. So having a 1 out of 2 chance that ability will crit is really really good for an outlaw rogue, especially with the kind of damage we could put out. The next buff we got is probably one of the best 2 combo buffs. We have Jala Roger which means Saber Slash has an additional 25% chance to strike an additional time during which you should be Saber Slashing as often as possible. The other buff is Broadsides. Your attacks generate one additional combo point. This is all around probably one of the best buffs an outlaw rogue can get because every single ability you put out, even something like Ghost of Strike which normally generates one combo point, will now generate two. And combo together with Saber Slash, you are likely to get a single global cooldown that will generate four combo points, allowing you to fill up your energy bar or combo point bar much quicker than usual. Grand Melee is a great buff, it is a pretty decent passive buff and is something I usually don't roll out of, simply because it provides attack speed by 50%, which is a damage increase. It also provides a leech for 25%, so if you do roll Grand Melee and you are in a situation where you might need some healing, 
you are more than welcome to run into a bad situation and use Crimson Vial in order to heal yourself. As you can see, the leech effect does increase how much healing you get out of the buff. The last buff we have is True Bearing, which is probably one of the best and one of the worst buffs in the game. It's simply because by itself it's pretty bad, but with cooldowns that you can line up together for True Bearing, such as a channel rush and your artifact weapon, this buff is actually very effective. Finishes reduce the remaining cooldown of many of your abilities by 2 seconds. So for example, I'll use my artifact weapon, I'll stun the train dummy, and I'll use run through. And I'll use run through again, as you can see, the cooldown for between the eyes is shortened every time I spend combo points. So basically I can go triple stun on my enemy without having to use vanish and go into stealth. And I can keep going back at it with more uh, between the eyes, although the stun effect won't be happening. True Bearing is a great buff, I would never use it on its own, either as the buff that I would re-roll out of if you don't have any cooldowns available. If it is part of a combo buff, as in like if you get True Bearing and a number of other buffs, but it's 1, 2 or all 6, then you don't want to roll out of True Bearing, because you have a supporting buff in order to be able to allow yourself to keep True Bearing on yourself. The general concept with Outlaw Rogues is if you get more than one buff, you don't want to roll out of those buffs ever, no matter what buffs they are. At least for PvE purposes, you want to get two or more buffs and never roll out of them, and you want to keep rolling out of buffs for PvE until you get two buffs. For PvP, you don't necessarily need to keep rolling until you get two buffs, because you can use some buffs single by themselves, such as Buried Treasure for Energy Regen, Grand Melee for Attack Speed, Shark of Waters for Crit, Jala Roger for Extra Hits for Saber Slash, and Broadsides for Extra Combo Points. So in PvP, some buffs are going to be more valuable than others. But for the most part, if you get three buffs, two buffs or more, you never want to roll out of them. Now that we talked a little bit about Roll of the Bones mechanic, I want to talk a little bit about the artifact weapon for Outlaw Rogue, as well as a little bit of pathing for it. First thing we have is the actual effect of the artifact weapon. Curse of the Dreadblades on 1.5 minute cooldown. Invoking the Curse of Dreadblades, basically allowing each Saber Slash and Pistol Shot to fill your calm points to full. There's a reason why for Talents we are running Deeper Stratagem, because it synergizes as well with Curse of Dreadblades. But every time you use a finisher, you will consume 5% of your current health. Now, some people have thought that 5% health consumption is a lot for PvP, and you're basically are going to be putting yourself in a death's door if you are going to be using this artifact weapon. But for the most part, as long as you are not using this ability when you have no health, you should be fine, you should be able to survive and burst through your opponent. I feel like the 5% uh, health consumption is just a flavor thing added to the weapon. It, for the most part, hasn't impeded me in any way in PvP. When you are building your artifact weapon, some of the uh, traits to note for are Fortune's Boon, which is reducing the cooldown of Adrenal Rush by 25 seconds after 3 ranks. You have Blade Master. While Repost is active, every parry gives you a combo point. Blur time, which means during the general rush, your ability cooldown recovery is 15% faster, which can be comboed together with true bearing in order to get your cooldowns back much quicker. Another trait is blunderbuss, which on uh, Saber Slash it has a chance to replace your free pistol shot with a blunderbuss, which will simply deal more damage and will award one combo point, reduce your opponent's movement speed by 50%. The only difference between Blunderbuss and Pistol Shot is the damage increase. Another notable trait to look out for is Ghost's Shell. Your Dreadblades heal you for 2% of your maximum health for each effect cleared by Cloak of Shadows or Resist during its duration. Once you stack it up to 3, I'm pretty sure the effect is 6% of health. So if you're loaded up with many dots from Warlocks, Mages, and Priests, and you clear all these effects, and any other magical damage you take afterwards will heal you. Last what I have is Greed, which is very specific for PvP. Run through occasionally awakens Dreadblades, unleashing a sweeping attack against all nearby enemies for 100k worth of physical damage, and healing you for 85k per target hit. This is great in AoE situations or against classes with pets and you'll find some use out of this, but for the most part it is a proc chance so I wouldn't really rely on it. It is an interesting trait but probably least notable when it comes to PvP. That's really all the traits that I want to discuss. As you can see I have relics but relics do not apply in PvP so we won't even talk about those.
And I think this is everything you guys need to know in order to play out the rogue in PvP in Legion at max level 110. I've covered everything you guys need to have and need to know. Now from there on, all you have to do is practice the spec. The only way to learn how to truly play the spec is to play it. The guide is only going to get you the basic formation. The best way to learn how to truly play Outlaw is to practice and play it. So go ahead and queue Battlegrounds, queue skirmishes, make mistakes and learn from mistakes and uh, just keep playing the spec until it all starts making sense because eventually after playing it for a while, it will. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think about the guide and let me know if you want me to do a guide on the other two specs. If I have enough of you that want to see guides on other two specs, then I will definitely do it. Thank you guys so much for watching, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.